north now, uh, getting out of the heat of Phoenix, which I think will hit a high today of probably about 45, 46 degrees or about uh, 110, 105 Fahrenheit. Mm. Yeah, really hot. So we're taking our dogs up to the high country where it'll be about 20 or 30 degrees cooler so they can run. And on the way, we plan on uh, looking for some prickly pear cactus, which uh, we are going to make some really good preserves out of. Yes, we or, or Aaron. Let's see how this yeah. goes. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see where it goes. But, uh, you well, honey, I can always put my apron on. Just my apron. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about prickly pears. Alrighty then. Pink tongs. Pink up. tongs. Thank oh, you, yes, sweetheart. Sir. So, I've got the cute little pink tongs to get the prickly pear, and someone has gloves. the gloves. That's right. So, you know who wears the pants in this relationship? Who? Say it. Say no more. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna look for some really nice, pretty garnet colored, not wrinkled. Um, What's wrong with wrinkled? Um, a lot of things. I'm wrinkled. Right. I know. Exactly. <laughs> this one looks pretty good. I want it a little bit redder if I can find those. So, um, you know, I can, you know, while I'm doing that, you can get all the hairs off. What about these? Okay. Look how, look how red those are. That one looks really good. Like, look at the difference. Way yeah, better. Yeah, I think we need to get some of that, well, that ruby color. Ryan. Okay, dogs ran away. Hold, please, on prickly pear session. Orion! Where'd it go? I don't know. So here we've got some that are fantastic color. And, uh... See? Yeah, those are really good. All I see is me picking these things. That's right. Mm -hmm. You're like the videographer. Okay. I'm like I did all the driving. Huh? I'm the worker? You're the worker. Okay. You're the worker bee. Where are you guys doing? You're so happy. So happy. Got to be careful with these things. They do have stickers. That's why they're called prickly pear fruit. And um, you just got to be cautious of the, the main spines on the ears of the prickly pear. Other than that, it's a pretty simple procedure. Do have to burn the stickers off once we get back to the house. Got a pretty good harvest there, sweetheart. I know. This is like the best one. Look how mm -hmm. great they look. Really yeah, those pretty. Look phenomenal. Right? Nice red, deep red color. Mm -hmm. So we uh, just spent about half an hour in the high desert, busy picking prickly pear fruit. And uh, I think we got more than enough to uh, make our jam and our preserves. And uh, the next time you see us, we'll probably be in the kitchen. The kitchen? <laughs> yeah, the, the kitchen cooking away or should i say erin cooking away and preserving that's right mm -hmm. yeah, that's always right we'll be kitchen we'll be kitchen in the okay. kitchen mm -hmm. yes okay nice little freudian slip there the kitchen do you get it mm, i don't i do but then again i got a warped sense of humor okay <laughs> what is this it's american music not your american. South african music i'm so sorry Okay, so we are finally back home from our little Sunday excursion um, up in the high desert and we collected uh, some really good prickly pear fruit and then continued Egg all, bucket. and then continued on up north, gave our dogs a good swim and let them run around in the nice cool air. And now we're going to process our prickly fruit. So while Erin's busy uh, prepping all the prickly pear fruit and getting all the fine hairs off them, I'm going to start the next process, which is, these are brand new ca uh, jars for preserving and they have to be sterilized and clean prior to being used or the first time that you're going to use them. So basically you're going to take the lids off and I'm going to put them in a pot of boiling hot water and that will sanitize them, take any grease off them that was in there from the manufacturing process. And uh, you can take care of that right now. Here go our mason jars into the hot water 
leave them in there for about 15 minutes and uh, they should be good to go. The lid on and let them carry on cooking for a little longer. <coughs> Unfortunately, someone... Still scrubbing. <laughs> Almost done. <laughs> and the hard work still continues because now we have to peel them. But now the fun begins because now I can play with my, my little knife. The way you need to peel these is you cut off the ends, top and bottom, and then cut a little slice on either side. Think of it as like peeling a grape. Once you get that little slit, you just start peeling off the skin. You don't have to be like super like everything off because we're going to be blending it and then straining it. Anyways, so we just want to get the majority of it off and so that we can make prickly pear juice essence because the inside of these prickly pears are actually like very seedy. Um, and then they say you can eat them. I don't like to eat them, so I'd rather get out all the essence and flavor out of the prickly pear into a juice because then I can make prickly pear lemonade later. We'll use this for the jam and the glass. So how's the peeling going, honey? Super fun, it's my favorite. I love sitting here just peeling away, peeling <laughs> away. It's very therapeutic, but I know the end result. Will be it's worth it. All worth it. That's what yes. I love to hear. Very pretty color. We're gonna get rid of all those seeds. Still got a ways to go. <laughs> <laughs> so my mason jars are done with their boil and their sterilization. Got a magnet here, grip tool of some sort that Aaron <laughs> gave me to remove the jars without burning my fingers. So I'm uh, gonna start removing the jars. And there is number one. Really easy. He's doing it wrong. You gotta use the blue side. The blue side? Now you tell me. <laughs> you really let me make the mm -hmm. jackass out of myself on Primal Provider? Sorry. Okay. Keep going. I'll keep going. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna play with the magnet. Hopefully I do this correctly. So I'm just gonna stick it in the water and see how many lids we can get. It's my knife shelf magnet. I didn't oh, have my we've got a grand total of one. The knife mount. I think we need a proper magnet. It's... Listen. I'm getting my... one lid at a time. That's all you need to do, so what? The kids I... are probably running around with my other magnet. So I we just have to That's when I go do. fishing and catching one at a time. It's primal. Catching lids. Okay. Making do. Making do. Mm -hmm. That is true. So, finally fished everything out and uh, we'll keep on cutting and cutting and peeling. So we have finally peeled all of our prickly pears and we have this beautiful color, all the fruits kind of halved in here. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna put them in a pot of water and boil it for about 10 minutes because I just want to soften the fruit and get any of the um, leftover peel that might've been on there kind of, um, I want to remove any bitterness or anything like that um, and just get it to like a good pulp so that I can blend it afterwards and then we'll strain it. So here we go. It's okay. So I'm cutting some lemons and squeezing them um, for the um, preserve recipe because lemon juice is a natural preservative and it maintains the freshness and the vibrancy of the color. It's like the same concept when you slice and peel apples and you put lemon juice in there to prevent them from browning. It's the same concept what you do when you preserve. So lemon juice keeps it all fresh and pretty. Erin uh, just finished boiling uh, the prickly pear and I get to play with the blender. So I'm gonna puree the prickly pear for her. Yeah, getting all over me. <laughs> How's it look? Soupy. Does it look foamy? No foam. Okay, good. Just a little soupy. 
Think it's good? I think it's good. <laughs> good job. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to strain our beautiful prickly pear juice. We just wanna get any of the seeds or any of that fibrous material or any possible little stickies in there. But we're gonna use a really fine sieve to strain it all out. You can also lay cheesecloth in there if you want as well. Push it through and you should have this really pretty color juice at the bottom and all your residual on top right there and then we toss it. We have successfully gotten four cups of prickly pear juice that I'm going to put into the pot over here. Typically you have one cup prickly pear juice to one cup of sugar. So we're gonna throw this in and then measure out four cups of sugar. I'm gonna add a little extra because I like it sweet. And I'm also going to add some honey to mine. So some lavender honey that actually I picked up back home at a lavender farm. And I think prickly pear and honey together will be good. Oh my. <laughs> This that is a lot of sugar. One cup of sugar per cup of juice. We have four cups. Uh, I think that will cure any sweet tooth. Yeah. Sit and put in a little extra pectin to make sure. Okay. Because when you add the sugar um, and you're going to add fruit pectin and it's what um, thickens everything. So this recipe, I'm going to add one and a half packages of fruit pectin. Sure gel, your classic fruit pectin. There's all different uh, variations. Some of them are stronger than others. I really like to ensure that I want my jelly to set because every once in a while you'll get something that's a little bit more syrupy than jam um, texture and you can actually fix it by taking it all out and boiling it down and redoing it again, but I'm not doing that. And I'm gonna do another half pack. Okay. Just be on the safe side. And then you're gonna add your lemon juice. You're adding your lemon juice to preserve your jam and keep it vibrant and fresh. You cannot can prickly pear without using lemon juice, or really any jam for that matter. So, there we go. It's just like with pickles or anything like that. Um, you have to have a little bit of salty brine. Um, tomatoes have their own citric acid in there. So when you preserve, um, you always have to have some type of citric vinegar or something in there. Um, and the process of doing this is we're going to make this and then when you jar it, um, you have to put it back in the water again. So it's great for people with a farm to table or forage to table philosophy and you have to harvest something and you can't eat it all right at the same time. Definitely but, not with full bags of sugar in it. <laughs> it's like fast. So anyways, I'm gonna add two teaspoons to every cup of juice that I have. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. And one for good luck. Right. Okay. I'm gonna stir it up. Now we are actually going to fill the jars. We've boiled the preserves for about three minutes at a rolling boil. And now we're going to take a funnel. And if you don't have a funnel, use a fritter water source. <laughs> so it comes in handy. So we really just want to get it into the jars. And one of the main things as well is that you do not want any like food source on your edges here because you need to have a firm seal. And you want to leave one quarter just like right up to those like ridges right there, right there, and let it set and go to the next. In a minute, after I do this, I'm going to take a wet paper towel and um, get all the edges off. 
um, like I said before, because it's super important that um, you have a really good seal and you don't want any like contaminant on the edges of the glass where I'm about to put these tops on. So we're gonna do this for a little bit and then we'll put the tops on and then you have to process it again. Um, so you get a seal and then you can put these in dry storage um, for like 12 to 18 months. So, and then once you open it, then you have to refrigerate it. So Aaron's busy putting all the tops on and then we're gonna put them into the um, pot of boiling water that will be the final step before You're gonna put it in for like 10 to 15 minutes so it can process because you're trying to get that steam so that they seal, like right now they have like, they pop and when they cool, they'll suck in and and that's when you know that it actually, that's right, for effect. So that's when you know you have a seal okay. and any ones that don't seal, you have to put them in the refrigerator. All right, so we're finally at the final process, mm -hmm. busy grabbing the cans and putting them in the pot of boiling water. And they're gonna stay here for about 15 minutes and then uh, we'll take them out and let them cool and let them cure up for about 24 hours. Uh, just so we don't get burnt. Blue end in the water. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> Ooh. Looks like we're taking out some nuclear liquid. Yes. So we actually got 10 jars out of our day's effort, so it's been a fantastic day. It's awesome. So this takes like 24 hours to process and there's a jar behind Alden that um, my girls and I did raspberry jam. Alden, if you want to grab that jar and show them. So after it processes, that it, would be the final product. Right. So we picked raspberries and made raspberry jam and it turns into a jelly-like substance. So prickly pear is a little bit more like translucent and um, has that real like vibrant color. So good morning. Um, we've had some time for the prickly pear jam to set and now it's time to taste the results. So I just toasted up an English muffin. I think I can get this off. <laughs> okay, hold on. Okay, we're gonna start over. <laughs> I really do believe that learning how to preserve is a great skill set um, to uh, amplify your forge to table skills. Um, it's a technique my mom taught me and I've taught my kids. Um, awesome. When you preserve, you know what's in your product. There's no weird chemicals. Talking with my mouth full, it's delicious. Thank you so much for watching.